Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will cover how to increase image quality by adjusting color balance. Now we're ready to look at color. Color is, of course, the first thing the eye focuses on when we look at a digital print that is color. And if we've corrected the tone first, we fixed some of the color problems, maybe with saturation, but we probably need at least one more adjustment in a, a bad print or a bad photograph. And that's a balance correction. Color balance is adjusted from the neutrals. We'll look at this in a moment. And generally, once I fix the tonality and the color balance, 90 to 95, more even 98% of my images are properly corrected and will print with high quality. There's one area of special correction called selective color correction that I'll talk about for a minute since a color correction session would not be complete without it, but we really rarely use that control. When I want to adjust color balance or what we traditionally call cast, so you might have heard me say earlier that the image I showed you in the image problem example had a red or a magenta cast, means it has too much magenta. I'm going to use the same controls. I'm going to use my curves. This time, I'm going to use a curve that is just for the magenta channel. So remember, when I adjust the tone curves, I move the cyan, magenta, and yellow, and actually the black channel too, all at the same time. That's why we saw that relationship between wanted and unwanted components change. If I want to fix the magenta cast in this image, the place that I need to look is in a neutral. Now this is a very extreme example, but imagine you have a photograph or maybe a print of a photograph that you're trying to see if it looks natural or you're trying to correct to satisfy a print buyer. Chances are there's something neutral in that image. Might be a person in a piece of white clothing, might be a street, so pavement on the street is often very gray. Number of other objects we can look for that are neutral, whether they're in the highlight or darker areas we would call maybe a gray. All I'm going to do once I have my neutral is I'm going to take the magenta curve. Now I've made a less extreme example for you so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to pull it out of the quarter tone, which is typically where my cast is. Remember, you can identify a cast by measuring a neutral color in a tool like Photoshop or Image Viewer. It should have a certain ratio of cyan to magenta to yellow. Typically, the cyan is the highest. The magenta and yellow are a little bit lower. So that ratio changes through the tonal scale. That's called gray balance. But to give you a general idea, if I measure a quarter tone neutral and it has 25% cyan, I'd expect that it'll have about 19 or 20 percent magenta and yellow. The mid-tone, the ratio would be more like 50 percent cyan to 40 percent magenta and 40 percent yellow to make a gray. So if I measured a neutral in this picture, and I'll go back and forth for you a little bit, and I had 25 cyan and 23 or 20 whatever I said magenta and 30 yellow, uh, excuse me, if I had 25 cyan and 23 or 22 or 21 yellow, but the magenta is at 30, then I found my color cast. I'm simply going to pull this back to correct that cast. Okay? What color might that fix? It's going to correct neutrals. Clearly, we're looking at the neutrals, so that's very obvious. They're going to render closer to gray without the color cast. What about saturated colors? Isn't there a color that has magenta in the quarter tone? That would be the greens. So when I have a magenta cast and I pull the magenta out as I showed you, I have this relationship in a green color. Cyan and yellow are wanted. They're at the end of the curve that I didn't move. When I open the curve for the magenta to pull out that cast, I'm actually also fixing the saturation of the greens. The last correction tool for color that I want to talk about is selective color correction. Selective color correction is a traditional control. It allows me to adjust color within a color. So maybe I want to take cyan not out of the quarter tone for the whole image, but I just want to take cyan out of reds, for instance. There's a couple of ways I can apply this. Photoshop has excellent selective color controls. 
We also have it in a profile editor from the Fiery Color Profiler suite. But I want to highlight for you here that the, almost the only reason I would ever do selective color correction is for print buyer preference. Okay? So I make a print, I look at it, maybe it doesn't look natural, or maybe I have some copy to match and it's not matching. I go back and I fix the tone, I fix the color balance, I make another print, you've all been in this situation, the art director says, well, that's perfect. But look at this red apple here. The red needs to be just a little bit more shapely. It's a little bit too bright looking. Can you put some cyan in the red? Certainly you can. You go use selective color correction. Photoshop, there's a number of other ways you could do this. But the important thing to understand is that we're not going to go make a mask around that apple in some image editing application. We're going to use a global control, selective color, that lets me adjust one color within a color. So just for an example here from Photoshop, I've decided that I want to put more magenta into my science. Sorry, take magenta out of my science. So I go back and forth here. Look at the boat. The front of the picture, look at the sky, the building to a certain degree. Magenta is just coming out of those specific colors. Okay? There's a much more refined way I could do this by picking a more narrow band of color than just saying cyan, but I just want you to get the idea of selective color correction. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.